Welcome to the full Nelson. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Masterpiece Arms BA chassis. This is the competition model, which comes with the barricade stop and Trinity rail. I thought it was supposed to have a side cut, but this is for a Model 700 long action. Maybe it's only for the short actions that it has a side cut for the Magwell. I'm not sure about that. I may have to talk to them about that. Anyway, um, I do not compete in PRS. This chassis is pretty much designed for that application, but it also has features that are very applicable and useful if you're just going to be doing target shooting or long range shooting, extreme long range shooting, which is what I am going to be using this rifle for. I wanted the ability to mount a tripod, which you can do. Um, you can also get a spigot mount for it to run your tripod out even further. This Masterpiece Arms has tons of bells and, uh, bells and whistles in terms of accessories that you can get for this thing. Um, they have a rapid attachment system that grabs onto this groove here that allows you to quickly with the turn of a knob slide your bipod forward or backward or probably anything that you have mounted on that. I suspect you could use it for a tripod or anything like that. Anyway, so that's a pretty neat feature. Um, I really like this grip that they have put on here. It's just a really well thought out grip and it has changed kind of the way I shoot. Um, I shoot a lot of AR-15s and stuff like that and a lot of the time you have a wraparound grip like this. This is basically designed to be shot kind of like that. It has a cutout for your thumb here. You slip your finger in the shoot and man it, it feels phenomenal that way. It's super comfortable and it, that's just a really well thought out designed grip. Um, it has a anti-cant bubble level built into it, as you can see here in the chassis right there. That's another feature that I really like. Um, you can always just mount one to your scope if it doesn't have that, so it's not like that's a necessity for me in my chassis. I also wanted the ability to be able to adjust the, um, the well, I want to call it the comb height, but the height of your cheek rest here and also the length of pull. Um, I also like the ability to be able to adjust the height of the butt pad back here. That's a feature that I think is often overlooked. And to me, something that I really like and insist on having, that's because when you run something like a 55 MOA base that takes your rifle scope and cants it severely like this, it makes the ocular lens of your rifle scope sit up so high that um, not only do you want to adjust your cheek rest high enough to where you can see through it, but then on top of that, if you have this left down really low, it just doesn't feel right. It's not comfortable when you go to shoot it. And this allows me to adjust it to the appropriate height to where everything feels, feels great when you go to shoot. Um, overall, I think this chassis is the best looking chassis of any I have seen on the market. And I feel like it offers more features and more capabilities than almost any chassis on the market. Um, with that being said, I do have one major complaint for this chassis. <coughs> and it's really my old, the only major complaint. I talked to Masterpiece Arms about this and mentioned it to them and they didn't really give me a lot of clarification on it other than to say, yeah, you're right. There is nothing to keep it from being over inserted. Maybe that's their way of saying, uh, of course, there's no way to do that. What are you thinking that, you know, that would be a bad feature or whatever? I don't know. But I'm going to explain to you what the problem I have with this thing is, and that has to do with the magazines. So they advertise that this will take Accuracy International magazines and also these um, Magpul mags, and I have no trouble with the Magpul mags. They fit in there no problem. Can cycle the bolt no problem. Great. Now, the reason I generally don't run these mags is because I run my bullets really, really long. And this will allow me to seat my bullets a lot longer than what the Magpul magazine will allow for. In fact, I can't even fit my bullets in the Magpul magazine, but I can fit them in this thing no problem. Now, the one hang up with this magazine is that when you insert it, if I insert it with the bolt closed, okay, I can run it back and I can't, well, I can run it forward right now. But what it's doing is it is depressing the follower in order for me to run it forward. That's not an issue with this one. It's held in such a way and the feed lips are such a way that you really can't make this thing get in the road when you go to run the bolt. Now, 
say and, and and some people will say this isn't an issue but to me this is a huge issue issue it's something that either they dropped the ball on and should have built something into the chassis to deal with this or whatever i'm just surprised that they would say it's designed to run these this type of mag and then you have an issue like this but if i take this magazine and say i with the bolt open put a little bit of pressure on the bottom of this okay so Let's say this were a, load, or a loaded magazine and I go to insert it into the gun and the bolt's open, okay? I just ran that in there. I can't close the bolt. Now the reason I can't close the bolt is because if you look down in there, you can see the lips of that magazine sticking up. You see that? Okay. Now, let's see if I can hold this just so I can show you guys just how much movement there is in this. You see that? Yeah, not too, not a happy camper over that one. Now, the feed lips on this mag, um, because of the way they're bent inward like this and then it being squared off, they actually run up into the bottom of the action, which will not allow it to be over inserted like that. But these Accuracy International Magazine's feed lips don't come that way. Um, they're just different. They're not squared off. Instead of them being squared like this, they're basically sitting kind of like this at an angle to hold the bullets. So you can over insert your magazine. Now this causes a couple issues. Um, one of them is if you accidentally put your hand or set this thing down somehow on the magazine and then you go to run the bolt, you're only going to be able to run the bolt back and then your action's gonna be locked up, okay? Because it's running into the feed lips. So then you gotta pull it down and I can run the action again, okay? Now, some of you are probably gonna say, you gotta bend the feed lips a certain way. I spent days, well, not, not days like straight, but I spent several days um, bending the feed lips every which way, trying to get them widened out to see if that would stop on the bottom of the action, but then it's so wide that the bullets basically just fall out of the top, squared them back in, or bent them back in. I tried getting those feed lips every which way. And for one, you shouldn't have to take a brand new magazine and bend the crap out of it to get it to work in the chassis, in my opinion. But even doing that, I still can't get it to work the way I think it ought to work. Either the magazines need to have something tacked on them, which I don't blame the magazines. Accuracy International has been making these magazines for forever. If you're designing a chassis that's going to work with these magazines in this action, it's almost like nobody even tried it. So that, that to me is just ridiculous. Um, as I mentioned, I can just pull it down, then it works. Or if, say for example, I were to insert this with the bolt closed, then those feed lips run into the bottom of the bolt, making it to where it will not catch, catch the feed lips of the magazine. But usually when I did that, half the time the follower would still pop up high enough that the bolt would catch the follower. It's not doing that right now, which is great, but this is as good as I could get it for that. So if you bump the magazine at all, whether you're in a competition or in, out in the field or anything, if you set this thing down in a way that that magazine has any pressure on it on all, at all, even if it's by accident, it's going to push that magazine to where this is unusable. That is my biggest qualm with this chassis. And in my opinion, for a chassis you're paying eight or $900 for, unacceptable. I have seen chassis that are $550 and $600 and they do not have this issue. So that's ridiculous. I, I think most of their emphasis with their chassis is for PRS shooters, which are shooting short action. And maybe that's why they have overlooked this in a long action. Maybe there's something I'm missing with that, but I tried to talk to them about it and they were, and I specifically asked them, there's nothing in this chassis that prevents the over insertion of a magazine. In other words, you know, my bolts binding because of that. And they just said, no, there isn't anything in it that would prevent over insertion. Okay, so I guess I guess they don't see that as a problem. We'll probably get a hold of them in the future. We'll get a response out of them and find out what's going on there. 
um, if they're going to fix that, if it happens to be this particular type of magazine. But again, I bought the magazines that, that their stuff solicited as being compatible with their chassis. So that's my biggest complaint. Other than that, the chassis is phenomenal. If I didn't have that issue, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. But having that issue until I know for sure what, what the problem is with that, whether they drop the ball in the design of that or whether they miss advertised and saying that this magazine's compatible with the chassis or whatever, I can't in good conscience recommend it. And that's simply because the magazine system is so integral into this overall rifle system. If your magazine doesn't work properly or you accidentally put a little pressure on it and everything binds up, to me that to me that's unacceptable. I think I should, and I'm not saying I would do this, but I'm saying in my opinion, you should be able to rest this thing on the freaking magazine and it should still work. Now, that's not the way you should shoot it. I'm not advocating that you would do that, but it should work. It's kind of like an AR-15 guy say, don't rest them on the magazine. Absolutely right, you're not supposed to do that. Don't do that. But guess what? If I rest it on the magazine, it still works. Okay? So, yeah, I, whatever. I'm, I'm not, like I said, some people probably misinterpret that. Don't rest it on the magazine. That I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying if you're moving around on the ground and you bump it against any rock or anything and all of a sudden things are bound up, well, yeah, that's, that's just a bad design. So, that's my um, only real complaint with it. There is a couple feature, or one feature I would like to see on a chassis like this. Well, there's a couple things I'll talk about. One of them is you can get a monopod for this, okay? And I bought that aftermarket monopod and it's really neat the way it fits into this cutout here and stuff like that. It folds down, it has a little push button, locks into place, locks back. <coughs> um, I looked at that and thought, man, that's awesome, but I didn't really have any experience with monopods, but I thought I'll buy one and try it out because it just fits so well with the, the way they've designed this thing. Don't buy a monopod. Monopods, in my opinion, are garbage. After having used one, um, you can adjust them. It feels like it's a rock solid rest, but I'm telling you, your rifle will not shoot the same. And I've heard people talk about this with bipods, that if you put a bipod on like a, um, concrete, compared to dirt, that the rifle reacts differently. Well, a monopod makes that way worse. It, when you have a rear bag, even if, it, at least on this Harris, even on concrete, there's probably some flex in the front legs. But when you set this bipod down on a hard surface, and where I really noticed this is when I was shooting off some rocks. I didn't have a better rest, and I was basically shooting off of the edge of a cliff while resting on all of these rocks. And that monopod was set on rocks, just like the, the bipod is set on rocks. And I noticed that that monopod, because of the way it would dig in when you would shoot the rifle, was not allowing the rifle to recoil naturally. And it was having, uh, it was causing me problems downrange. I was shooting 1500 yards or 1600 yards or so. I would shoot some bullets that would stack on top of each other that would probably be within two or three inches and I'll probably put this video up later and part of my long range tutorial to help you guys understand this principle. But I guarantee that if I had been using a bag instead of a monopod, I wouldn't have had a couple rounds within two or three inches. And then all of a sudden a round that is like feet away from those, I would have had round after round after round after round within, you know, three inches, five inches, whatever at, at, at that distance. Um, and I've actually gone out and verified that since. I put the bag rider that this thing came with back on, went out and shot it at, oh, 1400 yards or so, no problem. Every single round consistently in the same spot. So don't get a monopod. I'll be getting into that later as well in my long range tutorial talking about shooting accessories, but don't get the monopod with this thing. Now, the one other feature I'd like to see on this and it would be useful for me, but I think it would even be really useful for PRS shooters is the adjustment wheels back here for length of pull and the cheek rest, which the cheek rest isn't a big deal. Most guys are gonna set that and leave it. I don't mess with that once I've got it set for my face. That doesn't adjust almost, no matter the shooting position, I don't mess with this. But in different shooting positions, I do mess with this. And the two biggest ones are if I go from prone to shooting freehand, I want this thing all the way in when I shoot freehand and I want it, you know, about halfway out when I shoot prone. So what I think an awesome feature would be, similar to the way their monopods design, it has a button you can push in 
for a quick adjustment to slide in and out rapidly and then you spin it for a fine adjustment, kind of like spinning this wheel for a fine adjustment. If there was some way that they could incorporate that same idea into this, that would be the bee's knees. Because you'd be able to pick this rifle up in a hurry, press a button, slam that thing all the way forward, which is the way I like to run it when I shoot freehand because it shifts all the weight back to my shoulder and I can keep the rifle a lot more steady and shoot like that and then you could turn around press the button jump out to about halfway out where you usually shoot when you're prone awesome so if they're listening that's something they could add if any other company is interested in doing that to me that would be a really good idea for your length of pull adjustment especially for anybody who's um, needs to change that in a hurry whether it's a prs shooter or something like that so that concludes my review for the masterpiece arms competition chassis Overall, pretty awesome chassis with the exception of the magazine issue I've had. And yeah, so that concludes my review. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the comment section below. Have a nice day.